So what's next? How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel. It is me, The Buff Nerd. For those of you who don't know or may have not seen my previous video, I just recently passed the CCNA 200-301 certification. And since then, I've been filled with excitement, anxiety, ambition, and all of those other emotions that uh, start to cloud your head after passing a certification. And the question that I'm constantly thinking about and asking myself is what's next. I'll tell you what's next. After thinking things over and reassessing exactly where I am in my IT career when it comes to knowledge, experience, and just the overall environment that I work in, I've decided that I'm gonna go for the CCMP, which is a professional level Cisco certification. And for those of you who may not be familiar with the CCNA certification or the paths that you can take when it comes to Cisco, I'm gonna very quickly just explain uh, the directions that you can go. So first, it starts out with the CCNA, which is the Cisco Certified Network Associate Certification. This is the first certification that you can get when it comes to Cisco. And as it said in the title, it is a associate level certification, meaning that if you play your cards right, you could potentially obtain a position as a junior network administrator or a network administrator. Fortunately, I got lucky enough to obtain a network administrative role without the CCNA certification, which really had me anxious to get it. If you look at my most previous video, uh, I talk about uh, taking the CCNA certification and you know all of the study material I used, how I overall felt about the certification, and you know recommendations that I make towards people that are, you know in that position. But after the CCNA, then you have the CCMP certifications. And Cisco just recently changed a bunch of things around back in February when it comes to how the CCMP can be obtained. Before, depending on the CCNA that you had, it being either CCNA routing and switching, CCNA security, CCNA collaboration, that would determine the CCMP level that you can obtain. You would have to take three tests, which would be, uh, for example, when it comes to the routing and switching, uh, CCMP back in the day, you would have to take a switching certification, you would have to take a routing certification, and you would have to take a troubleshooting certification, or they call it T-shoot back in the day. Now things are different. Now, instead of being able to get the CCNA in specific areas like CCNA security, CCNA wireless, CCNA data center, there is no specific focus when it comes to just obtaining a CCNA you know, ever since February. And also, when it comes to the CCMP, now that everything has changed, the CCNA is no longer a prerequisite when it comes to obtaining the CCMP. If you really want it, you could go straight for the CCMP, which now is two exams. And the areas of focus do not start until you get to the CCMP level. So focusing on security, collaboration, data center, all of those things, those don't start until you get to the CCMP level which is where I am. I obtained the CCNA, and now I'm gonna go down to try and get the CCMP, specifically the CCMP Enterprise Core Exam. After that, we can get real specific on you know where, but that's a story for another day. I just grabbed the official cert guide uh, for the CCMP Encore Exam, and I plan on digging into this over the course of the next coming months. The reason that I wanted to make this video was because I wanted to talk about some of the reasons why I decided to go for the CCMP instead of you know potentially switching lanes and going for a cloud certification. In my previous video, I mentioned how since I now have my CCNA, uh, there was a chance that I might start looking towards you know other vendor certifications like AWS or Azure in order to set myself apart and potentially become a better candidate when it comes to progressing in my career. The first reason is Considering that I'm still fresh when it comes to being a network admin, I did not want to spread myself thin when it came to learning too many things at once. As I said in previous videos, um, when it comes to me studying for certifications, not only am I studying that certification, I am also doing a lot of the physical stuff and getting a lot of hands-on experience 
at work every day. And all of that experience is not exactly, you know, stuff that's going to be on the Cisco test. This, these are uh, things that are on completely different platforms that are not even Cisco. For example, SolarWinds, Ansible, Palo Alto Firewalls, the list goes on. And considering that I am not involved in any cloud computing at my job right now, I believe that if I was to go that route, I would probably burn out when it comes to trying to manage all the studying. I am a hard worker, but I am not a super high IQ, photogenic memory, knowledge retaining genius. I've reached my limit before when it comes to trying to do too much at once. And, and that's primarily why I likely did not obtain the CCNA before everything switched over back in February. Spreading yourself thin like that, trying to learn too many things at once, and then dumping life on top of all of that would run anyone into the ground. Second, I only have about six months of experience when it comes to being a network admin, and that is not a whole lot of time at all. Once I really thought about it, um, I decided that I wanted to put in a decent amount of time before you know, deciding to try and switch sectors. I don't wanna be that guy that tries to hop from job to job whenever they are available. I want my resume to show that I am consistent and willing to put in the work in order to you know, become more proficient and help the company or whatever the case may be. And three, to add on to two, everybody that has a certification knows that just having a certification does not mean that you're all knowing. Certifications definitely get your foot in the door, but they do not take the place of experience. I'm pretty good at labbing it up at home. You know, I can, uh, you know, put in my console cable and get to labbing something and break something and troubleshoot it and have all kinds of fun uh, at home when, I, when it comes to dealing with my own personal lab. But all of that confidence disappears when you have to do that same thing or something similar that you may have never done in a pride environment. And by pride environment, I mean, and of course, in a network where things are moving and things can break and you will be blamed and stuff can get set on fire. I'm sure any network admin engineer that is watching this has been in that situation where they first got on, you know, they were told to do something on a switch or a router and they were scared to death that they were gonna break something. Certifications can't teach that kind of discipline and that kind of patience and, you know, give you that kind of confidence. That's something that you have to learn by experience, which, is why I said, you know, three adding on to two. After thinking all this stuff through, doubling down and, you know, going deeper when it comes to protocols, networks, designs, and functionalities when it comes to enterprise networks just made more sense to me. If I make sure that I know network administration or engineering inside and out before, you know, pivoting and going in a different direction, making that choice would be a whole lot easier. It would be easier because one, the fear of not having a backup plan wouldn't be present. Let's say I get looked over or for some reason I can't find employment after obtaining a, a Azure or AWS cloud certification. Going back to the network side of things could prove to be difficult if I don't have a decent amount of experience or you know I didn't put enough time in to hone those skills. Let's say I do make the switch and it turns out that I hate cloud computing for whatever reason. Because personally, you know, when I got into networking, it it kind of came easy. Like I noticed that when I got the Network Plus back in the day that it was a lot easier to pass that test. It was a lot easier to retain the knowledge. The networking side of things just felt natural when it came to trying to figure out what I want to do when it comes to the IT industry. I can't guarantee that that'll be the same when it comes to cloud computing because when it comes to cloud computing, there's a lot more than just facts that you have to know. You have to know uh, coding and you have to know scripting. You have to know uh, a language most likely like Python or whatever the case may be. There is a lot more than just the AWS certification that you need in order to actually become a cloud engineer. And let's say I put in the time and I got my CCMP before getting the AWS certification or whatever the case may be. And it turns out that I hate it. Making that transition back to networking shouldn't be that hard since I've already established a skill set and, you know, created that foundation. And one of the third reasons why uh, making that choice would be a lot easier is although knowing a lot of skills uh, could definitely get you a lot further in your career and help you establish, you know, some connections and uh, network with different teams and all that. And you never want to limit yourself to being, you know, just a one trick pony. In my opinion, when you're very early in your IT career, like, you know, two years or less, obtaining a professional level certification or, you know, just obtaining professional level experience will easily set you apart from you know anyone who is in the same shoes as you are and have the same amount of time when it comes to experience as you do having a professional level cert um that early in your career in my opinion i believe will 
you know, set you apart and make you top tier when it comes to the job market for newbies. I remember back when I had first, you know, wanted to get into the IT industry and I would see these, you know, these ads and these, you know, these promotional uh, photos and stuff talking about like CompTIA training and Cisco training. And, you know, they're talking about you, you getting paid $38 an hour just by having an associate level degree. And of course, that's one of the reasons why I decided that, you know, yeah, this is the direction I want to go. All I got to do is get my network plus and I'll be able to make $38 an hour too easy. That sounds like an easy situation. To, uh, you know, that, sound, that sounds like an easy win. But in all actuality, you don't make that kind of money until you are at the professional level when it comes to certifications and experience. And from what I've seen personally, uh, people that have like a lot of certifications, but are either, you know, basic or at the associate level, they still kind of got to start at the bottom on the help desk, you know, because they do have knowledge, but it's not a deep understanding of whatever it is, it being Cisco or Microsoft or whatever the case may be. So in my opinion, uh, for somebody that's very early in their career that has the drive to do it, um, I believe you should focus on, you know, one thing and get good at it. You know, especially if you get your foot in the door, if you get your foot in the door and you still have just an associate's level degree or whatever the case may be, I, I would recommend, you know, going to that next level and getting a professional level. So yeah, all of these things ultimately uh, made me decide to go the CCMP route. And the wisdom that I would like to spread after deciding to take this route is this. So before you make a move, before you set a goal, take the time to self-reflect and see where you are in your IT career and in life. Just because, you know, everybody's going in one direction doesn't necessarily mean that you have to follow. You have to look at yourself, you have to look at your skills, and you have to determine what it is that you enjoy doing in the industry. And after figuring out what that is, you have to determine whether or not your goal is aligned with that enjoyment. The last thing you wanna do is put a lot of effort and you know, a lot of endless nights into a certification or an area in the business that you don't even like. Cause then I can almost guarantee that for you or whomever, it will no longer be a career. At that point, it'll be a job. So play to your strengths. Now that doesn't mean close yourself off to, you know, newer technologies or, you know, exploring other areas of the business. It doesn't mean get stuck in your ways and stop yourself from growing and learning. It just simply means, you know, do your homework on yourself before you put too many eggs in one basket. If you like the content that I brought to you guys today, if you feel like you can relate, if you, you know, have any questions, comments, or concerns when it comes to, you know, the things that I've talked about, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. If you liked it, go ahead and subscribe. I am by no means an expert on this stuff, by no means. I'm still very early in my career. I'm simply just giving you uh, my perspective on things and, you know, basically going over some of the things that I have to think about when it comes to, you know, navigating through my career. I'll leave you with this. You're hungry. You want food. Do you go to a buffet where everything is good? Or do you go to fine dining where a few things are exceptional? Think about it. As always, stay safe, learn everything, and get the gains. Be it in the gym or in the books.